Northstar, the LTS dominating sniper titan. Let's take a look at how best we can use her and how to be as effective as possible with her. Let's get started. Northstar's plasma railgun becomes more powerful the more that you charge it. To charge it up, simply aim down sights and you'll see six individual pips fill up inside of your crosshair. Each discrete pip indicates a different charge level, and each charge level deals different amounts of damage. This weapon kills pilots in one shot anywhere on the body from all ranges, however it's a projectile weapon so you must lead your shots. Versus Titans, you're dealing between 550 and 2050 damage per shot. Critical hits, which happen when you shoot the glowing red spot on enemy titans, give a 1.5x multiplier to damage. A fully charged critical hit will thus deal 3075 damage, technically dropping an ion and tone in 3 critical hit shots plus a little bit more incidental damage. To maximize your railgun, I've got a few tips of different ways to position yourself and move as Northstar. Since Northstar is based upon the Strider chassis, we've got two dashes by default, with a third available if you use the turbo engine kit. A lot of the time, you're going to be focusing a lot on keeping your railgun fully charged up and ready to go, while using your dashes liberally to position yourself. When aiming, I find it best to play almost like you're playing Counter-Strike or Rainbow Six Siege. Fold your crosshair around the corner as you peek, pull the trigger the moment you see somebody, and then immediately move back to safety while you ready your next shot. Map geometry itself is your main defense as North Star, so take advantage of that as much as you possibly can while fighting enemy titans. If you're just being annoying in a team fight though, then sure, you can stand a little bit more aggressively and use your flight abilities more often, but there's going to be plenty of times where you need to do the most amount of damage possible while losing the least amount of health possible, and peaking like this opens up some great possibilities for you. North Star is all about abusing really tight sight lines. Generally, when combining your railgun with your hover ability, you're able to get off a fully charged railgun shot, a cluster missile, and then another shot charged up to three pips. Funny thing here is that if you don't fire the cluster at all, you're not actually going to have enough time to charge the railgun up any further than three pips, in most cases. When you shoot the cluster, you're canceling a canned animation that plays after the railgun shot, whose purpose is A, to look cool and look realistic to whatever extent is possible within Titanfall, but also to lock you out of recharging your shot too quickly. It's a way of limiting your rate of fire. So, if you've got that cluster missile ready, just shoot it. It's free damage. The animation cancel of doing this is roughly the same as just letting the second shot charge up naturally, so you might as well add the cluster in there for free. Many people view the hover ability as a poor option, since it lasts for too long and you reveal yourself to counterfire for too long. While it's hard to argue this point, there are a few things that we can do to try mitigating these issues in specific locations on specific maps. First, it's very important to know that as soon as your hover expires in midair, you're free to begin using your dashes again. Time your hover so that you'll have a dash available when it expires, so you can dash midair and potentially evade some damage. You can also start your hovers early and out of position, then drift midair towards the actual sight line you're trying to get to by hovering. This way, you minimize your exposed time while still dealing plenty of damage. The places you can do this drastically change based upon whether or not you have Viper Thrusters equipped, and for that reason I typically do run it, so I can use every sight line available to me. Now, here's a really cool strategy that I actually didn't figure out until I was actually in the making of this guide, which is kind of part of the reason why it got delayed a little bit, so let's just say you saw it here first, I guess. I have honestly not even had time to play with this in real games, unfortunately, but the proof of concept that I figured out in Private Match here is just too juicy not to share. It's just really important, I feel, in true game settings. So here's the gimmick. Use your hover while hugging a corner that you're wanting to peek. Wait until your hover is about to expire, then drift out, shoot, and instantly dash back in behind your corner right as your hover expires. Timed correctly, you're only exposing yourself for like a fraction of a second. That pesky ion that you're dueling is almost assuredly going to not expect you to come in from up there, and the dash midair while falling creates a super difficult to track motion as well. If you don't want to mess with learning this timing, you can always apply this exact same tactic by using a dash out and then a dash back in, and you can just start mashing your spacebar or whatever your dash button is right before the 
hover actually expires and you're just gonna immediately dash out and then again there is a cooldown between using dashes so you can just like if you're if you're sitting behind a wall in the corners to your left when the hover expires you can start mashing dash left and as soon as you realize oh crap i'm dashing left you can start mashing dash right and you're never going to waste the dash you're never going to go the wrong direction because of these cooldown mechanics preventing you from doing so it's extremely easy to input even if you're just mashing buttons no matter which way you do this, this is a very, very nice way to mix up where you're approaching fights from, and it will make anyone trying to win a peak battle versus you always be wary of you. In addition to this, there's a couple little neat gimmicks relating to the combination of both Hover and Flight Core, which were shared with me by a Twitch viewer that I think are at least worth mentioning here. First, if you're playing on a map with low roofs or doorways, but you really feel that the right play in the moment is to use your flight core in close quarters, you're oftentimes going to fly too high while activating flight core and have a really bad time. There's some doorways and some just random bars sitting really high up in the sky on some maps that prevent you from moving around as North Star while flying, so using this technique will allow you to use your flight abilities while not getting your head stuck. So here's the gimmick. If you use hover and immediately follow that with your flight core activation, you're instantly going to stop rising up in the air. You'll essentially be floating only a few inches above the ground, letting you pull off some maneuvers that wouldn't have otherwise been possible. That's about enough for the railgun and hover in specific though, so let's move on to the cluster missile. I could give you the real damage numbers here, but honestly they're inconsistent and don't matter. W whatever number I tell you it deals in damage is not what you're going to actually see in practice 99% of the time. It's all about positioning and timing with this ordinance. The cluster missile differs from Titanfall 1 in a few key ways, so let's just go into that first. The cluster missile now flies in a totally straight line, so no more random curving throughout the air. Pinpoint cluster missiles are now entirely skill-based instead of RNG-based, which I'm perfectly happy with. It also still kills pilots instantaneously on a direct hit. To balance this out, they don't fire instantly anymore, and they also force you to put down your railgun, losing your charge in the process. They also no longer begin their popcorn explosions immediately upon hitting a surface. There's now a short delay before those detonations start happening. This means that cluster missiles are not necessarily the end-all, be-all, anti-pilot ordnance like they once were. However, this doesn't mean that they're completely useless versus pilots. It's very far from it. If you use it in appropriate situations, you can wreck a million pilots very, very easily from situations they never expect to be engaged by a Titan from. Let's actually talk about a trick from Titanfall 1, which was very, very important to know, since it does in fact persevere as a useful action in Titanfall 2. So here's the trick. If you see an enemy pilot jumping onto your Titan, what you want to do is immediately dash towards the nearest wall, shoot a cluster at it, do a 180, take a couple of steps away from that cluster, and then disembark your Titan. What this enables you to do is deal significant and usually lethal damage to the pilot that's rodeoing you, while at the same time taking very little damage on your Titan itself. As you can see in the clips here, that cluster missile stops doing any damage to your Titan as long as you exit your Titan. If you continue sitting in your Titan, then you will take the full damage of that cluster, which is very, very bad. The goal here is to kill the enemy pilot while taking as little bit of health damage as possible and remaining as safe as possible. There's a lot of limiting factors that have been put into place in Titanfall 2 to make the cluster trick nowhere near as good, but it's still a usable option some of the time if you really feel so inclined. There's a lot of weaknesses inherent to it now which you will figure out with some playtime, but give it a shot at least. It is a trick that you should have in your back pocket whenever the need arises. Finally, we have tether traps. I see a lot of people online saying that tether traps are useless, they have no place, they're horribly underpowered, yada yada yada. While in a lot of ways I don't disagree, we're here today to be positive and show off how to use them, so let's run through them briefly. I personally like placing them really close to my Titan, near a corner that I'm trying to peek. This way, if I get pushed, they're in a position where they can't be killed until somebody pushes me and triggers it. It forces my tether trap to at least function, which is pretty fantastic. A favorite technique of mine lately has actually been to combine the tether trap with nuclear ejection to more readily get kills with it. 
as I'll state later, I find nuclear ejection to actually be a decent option for North Star. One great technique is if you're doomed, or at least nearly doomed and come across an enemy titan in his dome shield, set a tether trap at the base of the shield, stand close to it, and eject as the titan starts standing up. The tether will hit them the moment the dome shield fades, and you'll kill any titan nearly instantly while fully recharging your titan build meter. It happens so quickly that you can call down a new titan before you even hit the ground from your nuke, and Tether Trap makes North Star the best candidate in the game for nuclear ejection. Just keep in mind that this is absolutely a cheese tactic versus Titans that are piloted, as it's really easy to get executed if your footsies aren't perfect. Sometimes though, it does work perfectly versus unsuspecting victims, as you see me fall victim to here. Just make sure that you're doomed before trying to use the nuclear ejection. If your Titan is not doomed, you cannot nuclear eject. If you're in a situation where you got one bar of health and you're next to that, that Titan with a dome shield, walk into his dome shield and doom yourself. Shoot a cluster at your feet and doom yourself. You have plenty of resources to do that if you feel like getting the nuke off right away is your best tactical option. Finally, you've got Flight Core. This core gets such a bad rep, honestly for no reason, and I really don't understand why it's so universally hated. It's pretty much the only core ability in the game that isn't ridiculous overpowered shenanigans, so of course it feels weak by comparison. Generally, you're going to use this defensively when enemies push you, Damage-wise, as long as you realize that the rockets travel somewhat slowly and you've got to lead your shots, hitting about 5,000 damage or 2 bars of health on a Titan isn't far out of the question at all, and doing more is very, very reasonable. Like, you can do upwards of 10,000 with this core if your positioning and your aim is really on point. Like I said, doing this big amount of damage is certainly possible, especially against titans like Scorch and Legion who just suffer in the mobility department. But honestly, just because you're not nuking titans from 100 to 0 like laser and salvo cores let you do, it doesn't mean that this one is underpowered. Everyone else is broken. North Star is actually almost reasonable for what the power level of a core reasonably should be, at least in my opinion. When using Viper Thrusters, I prefer to try getting directly above my target and crossing over them so they have to spin 180 degrees to continue tracking me. Generally, that's an angle that most people are not used to fighting from, and they may have some difficulty hitting you. Maybe they won't, but maybe they will. Moving on, let's cover all the kits available to North Star. As always, Auto Eject and Assault Ship are completely terrible and should never be chosen under any circumstance if you're trying to perform well as North Star. Turbo Engine is honestly fine, it's my second favorite. Three dashes is a great feature, to be sure, but the lengthened recharge time does hurt, and North Star doesn't often need that extra dash, at least not in my experience. Counter Ready could be great if you use the smoke to create your own cover, as opposed to using it to directly kill pilots. Basically, you just kind of push aggressively, you get out in the open in a place where they wouldn't expect a North Star to be, and you can use your own smoke to cover your own retreat after you take a shot, for example. It's really, really meme -y. it's not something that I recommend that anyone does, but if you really wanted to use it that way, you kinda sorta can, I guess. When I tried using it this way, I had some limited success, but honestly, it felt like other options would have given me more consistent value. Overcore seems pretty worthless to me, since you generally don't want to be using North Star's core liberally. It's easy to build up regardless, so I would honestly skip out on this one. I don't mind taking a little bit of extra time to get a second flight core, or even a first one, in 99% of situations. I would rather be using my sniper rifle and cluster missiles as much as I possibly can. And what I'm sure is going to surprise a very large percentage of my viewers, I'm actually going to recommend a nuclear ejection on this Titan for the reasons I discussed previously. Even if you don't get a kill with it, you're certainly able to help your team control space a little bit better with it, even in death, which does indeed have some value. North Star's toolkit just gives her so many options when using nuclear ejection that other Titans do not have access to that... I, I feel terrible recommending nuclear ejection because I don't feel like you should use it, but... If you are just hell-bent on picking nuclear ejection, North Star is the Titan for you. As for North Star's unique kits, I think you've got two main viable options. First, Viper Thrusters enable you to do some great stuff with your hover ability on a very regular basis, while also powering up your core ability very nicely. This one is my personal favorite. Your other really good option is the Enhanced Cluster Missile, which allows you to shut down very large areas of the map on a very, very short cooldown. North Star's other options honestly feel like nothing more than gimmicks to me. 
Making enemies glow red is pretty worthless in most cases. It doesn't make her projectile much easier to hit in most situations. Shooting two tether traps simultaneously doesn't seem super powerful to me, especially with how slow the cooldown on that ability is. It just seems very difficult to actually garner value from it in 99% of situations when you could just be firing super cluster missiles over and over and over or hovering at double speed or triple speed or however much it boosts your speed on like a five, like what is it, like an eight or 10 second cooldown? Like, come on. Piercing Shot sits right in the middle where it's got an interesting niche in Last Titan Standing. If you sprint to the front of the battlefield as quickly as you can and take aim at an enemy's lane, you can actually pretty often get a two for one right off the bat before the enemy team can even react and realize that they're all stacked up. While it's not my first or even my second choice, it's something that I enjoy messing with every now and then, and when it works, boy does it actually work great. However, when it does work, you're probably not playing as the strongest of players anyways, so it doesn't really matter what you're picking in that situation. Versus really strong players, I might take this as a mix-up for a single round, just to try and catch some people off guard, and then make them start thinking about the penetrating shot, or I switch right back over to Viper Thrusters, something that just makes me go faster, or, you know, I buff my cluster missiles again, just something else to keep it mixed up and keep them guessing as to what the North Star is trying to really do. Anyways, everyone, that for the most part is going to cover it. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that you found these tips helpful. Let me know in the comments section down below if you have any questions, and I'll do my best to check in and answer them as best as I can. Special thanks to Kahoda, Cruel Cow, and Norseman for reading through my work here and offering feedback on the video before I went ahead and put it live. I'll see you in the next one, pilots. Take care.